Uh, one from each table can come and pick up a paper, a sketch pen, and a post it. <coughs> Can this team split into two teams? <laughs> Too many people. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So let's start. So congratulations. You are the scrum master of our startup, and we are going to do something that is going to be exciting, right? So let me let me start with this. When you hear the word startup, what comes to your mind? Like, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Chaos. Chaos. Then? Excitement. Sorry? Excitement. Excitement. Challenges. Challenges. Anything else? Opportunities. Opportunities. Super teams, yes. So you're going to have all of them, OK? You're going to have all of them. And um, so we are going to play, OK? And what are we going to play? A game, a role, or a movie. What are we going to play? Play a movie some other day. <laughs> But what are we going to play? Guesses, guesses. Role. 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 You're going to play a role of? Master. Of course, that is, that is a given thing. OK. And uh, the Scrum Master belongs to a startup company, right? And, uh, and this startup company has some other Scrum Masters also, which means that this Scrum Master is just for one team. OK. And this guy is newly appointed, or you are newly appointed right now. OK? So when we say that we are going to play Scrum Master, it feels like this, right? You're going to become a superhero and all stuff. But what it actually looks like in the context of a startup is this, <laughs> right? You have to play, you have to wear multiple hats at multiple times. OK, you have to be somebody for some time, and the next instant, you have to be some other person. Because there aren't enough people, right? So. How are we going to wear multiple hats? And how are we going to even tackle with a single work day? That is what we are going to look at in this session. Right? All set? Yep, yep. Nice. And this is not going to be like, I am the expert. I say so, you follow. Not that. OK? We are all experts. OK? I will assume that. You will come to know why soon. We are all experts. And we are going to learn from ourselves. OK? So now, I told you that there are multiple Scrum Masters and there are multiple people, right? And now, see how many Scrum Masters are there? More than 20 people are here. And are you all going to think the same way? No. No. Everybody thinks in their own way, right? Let me give you an example. Uh, there were two monks fighting on a, on a road, OK? They just came out of a class by their uh, say, a teacher monk, OK? And uh, they were fighting over whose interpretations of the teaching were right. This was the fight. So among the fighting monks, one monk was like uh, a guy of uh, older age, and the second guy was a little younger. And a third monk up happened to pass by. And this monk was of middle age. How many monks are we talking about now? A monk who is older? A monk who is younger and a monk who is middle-aged. And uh, this middle-aged monk was so sorry seeing the plight of these two monks fighting with each other. So what he told, OK, let me take you to the teacher monk and let us resolve this fight about whose interpretation is right. And uh, this middle-aged monk took all these two monks into the teacher's room. 
and uh, explain the situation. Okay, whose opinion do you want to hear first? Teacher monk said, old monk first. Old monk first. Okay, and uh, old monk started. He said A, B, C, everything, and then the teacher monk says, yes, you're right. You're right in saying this. Your interpretations are right. And then this old monk was very happy. It was brilliant. Hey, mine is right. You lose. I, I, and he went out of the room. And then this engaged monk was like devastated. Oh my God. Fine, I lost the fight. Let me at least make a try. He went to the, he went to the teacher and told his interpretation. He calmly listened. And then the teacher told, you are right too. Then this guy also was like happy. Because he was anger age and he got an appreciation. This guy also went. Now, who is in trouble? The guy who, to, who took these two people in? To the teacher. And this guy is asking, teacher, what are you doing? Like this guy told something, this guy tells the exact opposite thing and they were fighting and you say both are right. And the teacher monk explained, you are right too. <laughs> right? So, this is the real world. Let's face it. Everybody has their own interpretations and they have their own context in which they see the world. And we have to respect the context because you are not in that context, right? So this is all about reading other people's brains. And what if you could pass along your brains to other people? How, how, how nice it would be? How many times have you thought, oh man, this guy doesn't understand me. <laughs> how? Excellent it would be if I could just take my brain and put it into his damn head, <laughs> right? So we are going to do that, but not exactly, not literally, but figuratively. So how are we going to do that? So this white sheet of paper in each of the desks is the brain, okay? That is the brain. And that is going to contain what you think, okay? So this one hour, next one hour is going to be a series of situations, four or five situations maximum, where there is something happening and you are an observer and you have to respond to that situation, right? And uh, once the question is, ball is being passed to your court, okay, you take the decision. You are supposed to write in that sheet of paper in this format. This is my response. This is what I would do. Do it individually, not as a team. Okay, everybody. So write it in a sticky note and paste it. Okay, this is what I would respond. This is how I would respond. And also, there is a big situation going on, right? Like, there, there is a story which will be developed. And you should look at the story and see what are the things that are positive in this story. Do some Sherlock Holmes thing. Okay, what are the positive things that I'm observing here? And of course, what are the negative things that I'm observing here? So this A is nothing but what are the positive things you observe in that situation? And oops, is the negative things that you observe in the situation. And if possible, you could even write down what you would do to convert that oops into A. Do you want me to repeat these rules? Yes, I will play out a series of situations. Every situation will contain two, three slides. And after seeing that situation, a question will be put to you and you have to take a decision. And you should record your decision in a sticky note on the paper. Everybody should do individually, okay? And then, a is nothing but this place is for any positive observations, anything that are like that give happiness to you that something good is happening and oops is something that is very bad. Got it? Shall we proceed to the first situation? Okay. The first situation is this. You are going to enter into the very first sprint planning of the startup company. The very first. Okay. And you have some team members and the product owner and you are just going to enter that room where sprint planning is about to happen. And any people who don't have a sheet and sticky notes and a pen, they can come and take it. <coughs> so this is how it looks. Okay. You have a product owner, the guy with the French beard. And uh, that guy asks you, not asks you, ask the team in general. Let them settle down. I'll, I'll talk later. owner comes straight on the face of the team and asks this question, guys, off the record, how many features are we going to finish this sprint? Before sprint planning, he asks this question to you, okay? 
and uh, one of your teammates, these two people are actually your teammates. Okay, please uh, pay close attention to this. You might find some, some A factors and some oops factors in these situations, okay? And um, one of the teammate responds, let us not have huge expectations. Why not start with the same as last two weeks, five features? One of your teammates says this, okay? And then another teammate responds, yeah, I read somewhere that most teams set extremely high, hard goals in the first print and then they fail. They realize their potential only later. But I don't want to fail in the first print. Let us, let us not do the same mistake. Let us keep only five features. Got it? These two people are thinking that we should not commit more. And then they ask you, what do you think? Okay? Now the ball is in your court and you can basically take any of these answers. Option one, let's aim for more than five features. And option two, you guys are correct. Let us not aim as high as five features. And option three, I don't want to comment on this now, maybe later. You just take, you, you write it on the sheet with your sticky notes, this response, whatever response should come in the first column. And since you have observed this entire dialogue which happened between multiple people, see whatever you see as a A, like su super awesome concepts in the second column, and in the third column, write something which you feel is negative. This is not good. This should not happen. You have two minutes. It should be done on an indie. Come into play later. I'll tell you when. Yeah. Uh, re uh, re Okay, see, uh, your, your sheet basically should look, and, uh, one thing which is, uh, the second column should have things which are positive, what you perceive as positive in this entire situation, and oops is some things which you perceive as negative in these situations. Okay, so I'm just replaying, this is where it starts. Okay. Tell me when I, when I have to move. That is the intention. What is this positive negative? This is happening here. Negative is this. There are some, some faults here. There are some good things hidden in these pictures. Am I hiding? Okay. Most people are done. So here is how we are going to transfer our brains to other people. Guess how? Transfer this sheet to the next team and get, it, it has to come in a circle or whatever way works. Just transfer it some order so that this can continue forever. Yep, you can give it to them. <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me? Sorry? No, nothing, nothing is needed. It's all random, don't worry. You don't own that brain anymore. Just take a minute to look at each of the responses and each team should come up with one very non-obvious response for plus and minus. Anything that you find to be very non-obvious but that is there written by some other team or anything that would you would least expect. You put uh, order them in the order of obviousness and least obvious is what we need to talk about. You have one minute to decide that. Each team has to tell that. <laughs> let's, let's hear from this team. What is the most non-obvious plus you observed? Nothing. Non-obvious minus? Um, non -obvious. Can, one second. Can the, to your point, that was what I had. Okay, non-obvious minuses. 
non-obvious minuses. Um, they're saying since this is the first sprint, we don't know exactly what the velocity is. Okay. But uh, we were not much in agreement in terms of they said that past two sprints it was yeah. five points each. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no historical data. This was one point that we had in terms of we didn't see them actually analyzing it in terms yeah. of uh, high priority stories. No scientific analysis. No just sizing. a word of mouth. Exactly. It yeah. Was just features. Yeah. So the non-obvious minus was that there is no historical data, there is no scientific analysis, there is no velocity calculation, it's just a word of mouth. From your team? Anything that is non-obvious? So uh, one of the non-obvious which we felt was like uh, Scrum Master asking for how much stories, uh, we okay. didn't actually get that word. Yeah. Okay, uh, Scrum Master did not ask, it was the product owner. Yeah, so that was one. Okay. And. Uh, off the record, there is something mentioned on off the record. So, so off the record. So what is off the record and off the record is something like it's just between me and you, and no one else will know about this thing. Yeah. Okay, that is called off the record. Guys, off the record. Okay, news reporters come and say, right? Off the record. Do you want to give some comment? And the newspaper will publish in the next day. Say our sources <laughs> said. <laughs> okay, that is what is non. That is what is off the record. Anything? Any any non-obvious positives? Yes. Over to the next team. Hurry, hurry, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Uh, everything seems pretty obvious. Okay. <laughs> Nothing non-obvious. No. Everything plain vanilla. Okay. From this team. Uh, positive non-obvious was team thinking about next print in advance. Sorry? Team uh, thinking about next print in advance. Uh, Okay, that is non-obvious. Okay, they they call that teams. The fact that team is thinking about the next sprint in advance is non-obvious. Okay, that is a plus or minus. That's a, that's that's a plus. Okay. <coughs> what we are thinking is uh, the all the three options which we are he is asking. He should not be asking the all the three options to the team in the first place itself. Hmm. It that itself is an Non obvious, I guess. He's not asking the team. You are the scrum master. Yeah. You have to choose I one mean, among these three. He, options. in a sense, me. <laughs> yeah, you are the scrum master. You yeah. have to choose. I, I shouldn't be. You shouldn't give so the option at all in the first place because why scrum master is giving the, those options? Scrum master is not giving the option. You are the scrum master. Correct. And you have to choose one of those options. Do you find that you are the scrum master? You can tell any of these three options. You can tell any of these three, what do you call, like sentences as the end of the conversation. We are planning to have this option too, so you guys can, you guys are correct because the team has decided based on their previous experiences. So let's go with the uh, aim of as high as. Uh, okay. Point. The response Focus itself is non-obvious. Here. Okay. From your team. Uh, yeah, I think one of the positives that was mentioned is PO asking for team opinion on delivery. Okay. So didn't understand. Oh, that's a positive. Okay. And another thing is, there was a mention about this would help to release the pressure. So, I I, I don't know whether what kind of pressure like. Okay. They haven't still started. Okay. Probably they came. They come from the school where PO doesn't even ask for team's opinion before committing the user stories okay, maybe, for delivery. Maybe. So that is a positive point that at least PO thinks that team has a say in it. Yeah, it that is a positive point. But the PO should never ask. Yeah, yeah, that is a fine. That is fine. So what we are see, I, I'll I'll explain you what we are exactly doing here. We are trying to examine different schools of thoughts because not everybody comes from the same school of thought. Okay, and uh, by doing this brain exchange thing, we are able to understand what other person thinks. See, now this team did not write that response, but this team has to comprehend that response, and uh, somehow some people with actual sensibility wrote it, right? Which means that it is true in some context. That is what we are looking at. Got me? Yep. Any non-obvious minuses? Okay. So we basically came up with a lot of pluses and minuses regarding the situation. And uh, <coughs> what 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 do you think is the ideal option? Option three is the ideal option because nothing ha nothing is known until now, right? What is the size of the story? What, what how much hours it will take? Nothing is known until now. So size of the story doesn't matter, does, is not known, and option three is the ideal option, but depending on context, varies, right? And uh, time has, uh, brain has already traveled, okay? <laughs> now, <laughs> situation two. 
Now we are off that lobby and actually get into the sprint planning room where the sprint planning is actually <coughs> happening. Okay, so you enter the sprint planning room and you see two of your teammates standing like this. Okay, two of your teammates are standing like this. There is a blackboard and there, there is some stuff written on the blackboard. So what is written, I'll spell it out. It says sprint planning at the right end, okay, in some different colored chart piece. And then so sprint start date, first May, sprint end date. 15th May, and then an employee says, uh, we thought of saving some of our time. So we came here yesterday and wrote down some known details to start with. How does this look? <laughs> okay, so this is what you are seeing. Okay, so, so go through the same exercise. What doesn't look right, what doesn't look wrong? Now we are increasing in the level of complexity, right? First one was less complexity. This is increasing in level of complexity. And uh, you go and then say, okay, these all looks good. And uh, now we will also write number of days available also. Okay, as a third, third, third data point. Okay, that is what planning is for, right? First you should know how much days, how many days are there. And then uh, say May 1st to May 15th. And this guy writes 15, pretty straightforward. <laughs> right? Okay. Now there are two parts to this situation. First is a yes or no question. You can answer that and keep it to yourself. And after the second question is over, you can go ahead and commit it in all papers. Okay? The first question is, does this even look correct? 30 seconds to respond. Keep, keep the answers to yourself. Think. Has anybody not made up his mind so far so that we can proceed? Everybody has made up their minds, right? Okay. Now, coming to the second part, answer is okay. Right? We find that uh, there are, this is a workday only calendar, which means that you don't have 15 days, but 10 days out of which one day is a holiday, where you end up with 9 days instead of the planned 15 days. Right? So now the actual question is, what do you think the difference between this 15 and 9 years? What are the things that can happen? Okay? Start writing. There can be multiple responses to the question. What do you think is the actual difference between, in, in real world, 15 and 9? But you also said that when a data slide, yeah. it came one day early to detail out the known thing. Yeah. That day is somewhere in this. Yes. Assume, assume that, that they made all, any, anything you assume, you can assume anything. That's fine, you set your own context. So what, what is the actual difference between the 15 and 9 here? So after that response, your observations, positive observations about the scenario of the situation and negative observations about the situation. Come on. There can be multiple responses, you can just start writing. Whatever comes to your mind, that's fine. You don't have to appear intelligent because nobody goes to know, nobody is going to know who wrote it. Right? Everything is anonymous. Do you need a sheet of paper? Guys who do not belong to a team can join some team or they can at least sit with some team so that they can feel that they are a, they are a part of the play. <laughs> this question is a little difficult, right, compared to the last question. Yes. Yes, no yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Assume that we all agree that uh, it doesn't look good because we already found out that the no is the answer. So let us say that we chose no. And the actual question is what is the difference between that 9 and 15? Why do you think the difference between 9 and 15 matters? Where all it can impact? The moment more than 15 people appear bored, I would assume that this exercise is over and I will pass on to the next.
have response, positives and negatives. Do we? You have a question? Okay. Yeah. Fine. Let the brains fly. You know how they play, right? Don't get back your own sheet again, please. <laughs> you should get a sheet which you have not seen before. <laughs> you know what I'm going to ask you next? Be ready with the answers. Non-obvious answers, Any anything. Sorry? Only the, the that's fine, that's fine. Whatever is there, you can take. <coughs> Everyone looks so busy. The, uh, it, mm, it is mentioned as two sprint duration of two weeks is perfect. Okay. So that is non-obvious positive. Okay. And uh, in negative, it is mentioned as work started with only few team members. Uh, team thinks about weekend work very quickly. Okay. Team thinks about weekend work very quickly. Who wants to go next? Yeah. Okay, so on the response, we found uh, anything can happen. Okay. That's not obvious. See, to that's us. so philosophical. Anything <laughs> can happen. <laughs> that was really not obvious. Uh, nice. To us. Um, the other non obvious was um, um, eager to go. Okay. Uh, so, you know, uh, I don't find anything here in that. <laughs> you got to, uh, as uh, I said, that you got so to jump into the wrong thing. Yeah. This is not obvious. Um, and uh, here, non obvious, I don't find anything. Uh, wrong estimation, number of days. Hidden. Yeah, jumping to conclusions. Yeah. Okay. Probably. Yep. They're jumping into conclusions, and anything can happen. Yeah, that's, that's, that's nice. You want to go? Uh, we will not be able to meet the timeline. Okay. That's it. That is one that's that is a, that is a uh, response. Okay. Okay, you do, they don't find any positive and negative. That's fine. Who wants to go next? Okay. <coughs> so I guess they are written here, sprint planning should start on the day one, not on the previous day. Yes. <laughs> Scandalous, right? <laughs> okay. Any, anything else you have? Non-obvious stuff? Um, thinking to be improved. Thinking capacity to be improved. Okay. I don't know how can you mean. Okay, okay. You want to go? Uh, one of the negative things, waste of time in putting down unnecessary details. Okay. <laughs> I hope that doesn't refer to me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else left out? That team hasn't. And impact capacity. Okay. As a yay, and it's it's in the oops also, impacts from each plan. Okay. So that was non-obvious. I mean, you cannot have yeah. both ways. <laughs> um, and the other one was um, they already decided that they were going to miss the sprint goal. So that was. Yeah. So if you take a deeper look at this situation, what does this actually relate to? This is a startup where people are just starting to form their work style. And a single miss in this, could actually shift the proposed organization culture. Culture as in whether the teams are OK with working in the weekends or not, or yes. The answer may be anything, but this has a pro possible impact on the organization culture. It's just a simple question. OK, a uh, typically yes or no question. But whatever you say could influence other teams. For example, for my team, I say yes. OK, 15 days looks good. 
and uh, the other teams will get the pressure saying, okay, this team is working for 15 days, why not you too? Then what will happen? The entire organization will start to slog. Yeah. First place. They don't even know what the user story yeah. is. Just even though they are starting uh, initiation or this is the first uh, process they are planning, uh, planning to follow, they, the scrum master, whoever is the uh, responsible person, has to bring everybody into the same page exactly. so that they should talk the same language. Yes, then that is how you address the oops. oops responses, yay, it will it'll work out. Otherwise, everybody gives their own answers, yeah. which there is no connection. Yes. So that is how you address that oops. You have to basically educate people to bring them on the same page. They have to talk the same language that you talk. That is, that is how you address this oops. Right, shall we shift to the next one? Situation three. And this is not a cartoon, okay? And uh, you're going to be actually sneaking and looking at email of other people, okay? So you got an email from the big boss of the company, be it CEO or the founder or whoever it is, okay? And it looks like this. If you, can't, if you can't read this, you can probably come forward and read or you can ask me to read it out as well. It's, yeah, so bi-monthly release cycles regarding, this is a subject. And from the big boss at mycompany.com to all scrum masters at mycompany.com and received an hour ago, okay? Hi scrum masters, we are thinking of setting an expectation of one release every two months. We are thinking of setting an expectation of one release every two months. I am planning to send a communication to all concerned people regarding this decision. I hope we are fine with releasing a new version second Monday of every alternate month, which means that once in two months, release is going to happen. And uh, they are actually fixing on when the release is going to happen also in these two months. Okay. This month, second Monday it happened, which means that next month it will not happen, and the very next month, second Monday it will again happen. And it goes on like that. Does everybody get this point? You want me to repeat? No, fine. <coughs> wait, 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 wait. Let us put our observations on the brains, okay? Uh, please let me know your thoughts. Thank you, regards the big boss, okay? If you want me to, I can go over this email one more time and then go to the options. You are supposed to respond to this email. Okay, how are you going to respond? Let me go over the options. First option, that's awesome. Now we do not have to run around the office asking for the proposed next release date. Right? Startup happens. You don't know when, this, when it is going to release. Right? People have to run around the office. That happens. That's scary, right? So this guy is happy that it's awesome. That doesn't happen anymore. And the second, our product velocity is not so high. Can we release once in every quarter instead? Okay, this is, this is another viewpoint. And the third possible option could be, bi-monthly release sounds good, but just a thought. Can we make it second Thursday instead of second Monday? Or if necessary, first Thursday? Put it on your paper. You're not having your ex your same brains anymore, right? You exchanged it, or didn't we? Exchanged yes. it, right? Yeah. Do you want me to display the first email? That came from the big boss? Options, this is the option, these are the options. And again, the same format. Response, which option you are picking, and anything positive that you observe, and anything negative that you observe. Put your individual responses. Put your in You have to respond. <laughs> no, these are the three options. I'll tell you why at the end of this. I'll tell you why. Yeah. So I'm going to the original email. And as wrong, sneaky, or bad, write it in the oops section. Okay. 
somebody call me? Let's finish this within 30 seconds from now. <laughs> Done. Switch. Printed on it. We'll, we'll do it, we'll do it later. Keep it, keep it, keep it. One more minute. Which is non obvious. Option C. You, can, you should switch on the mic perhaps. No. Just a second. Yeah. Option C. It. What is this? It, there is no concern that we'll have to work over the weekends. Okay. Because the release date is on Thursday and weekends are spared. And. Uh, Okay, one more, uh, the, the other part of the, this, Oops. what is this? Oops. Scrum Master has not checked emails for an hour. Awesome. Excellent. <laughs> Who wants to go next? So the two concerns were that if you, uh, if you work on, thir if, you, if the release date is on Thursdays, people might not work over the weekends. But if it is on Monday, People are going to work in the weekends. That might be the team's, what do you call, way of planning or culture execution. It, it can differ for, from team to team. Who wants to go next? Nobody? OK. Forced nomination. Uh, option uh, in response, option A. That is, uh, I don't know how it's awesome without any planning, without any, anything. Just because Big Boss is saying and <laughs> adhering to it. And in this, uh, in positives, they have a vision for release, vision of a release. This okay. is not a vision, this is a disaster. Okay. Without ka any <laughs> type of planning, anything, we just fix a date and then just take whatever is available. Okay. Would be a disaster in production. Okay. And nothing in negative, right? Negative, they're mentioning that uh, capacity and velocity seem to be decided by the teams uh, and it should not be done by the big boss. So they put that as uh, negative. It's fairly non obvious, so that mention it. Okay. Who was next? Okay, here. In the AI part, it said that the scope is very flexible. Sorry? The scope is very flexible. Okay, the scope is very flexible. That's good. Okay. <laughs> and. Uh, Uh, this thing. The hoops part is that if we are not if we are not changing in the middle of the race, then it's good. If we are not changing the schedule in the middle of okay. the release. Okay, these people might be changing the schedule in the middle of the release, yeah. which means that initial hiccups will happen. That is the hoops part. I would say that for a non-obvious response, there were five responses, and four out of five were A. Okay. So they were very excited about what the big boss had planned. Um, that was pretty surprising. And then for a yay, they said they will release whatever we complete. So that seemed uh, not very goal oriented for okay. the team for a startup. Whatever happens, happens. Anyway, we are going to release. <laughs> OK. This team? Done. 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 I don't pay attention at all, do I? No. See? OK, I think this team uh, responded in all the way. They decided to put five sheets in each. OK. OK, so the oops case is, uh, what are we trying to release or how? So they really don't know what to release and what to, what 
how to you talk release. about dates but tell me what to release baba <laughs> that is a is a annoying yeah. thing actually okay that that's the good one here okay and the other one here is uh the good thing is uh, the asking for the team members input though he's already decided he's just trying to buy the uh, input from the uh, team members also yeah. so he they are also aligned with his ideas the big boss goes for a buy in rather yeah. than command and control Correct. right he did that one but still he want to yeah. make them to align yeah he's ready to yeah hear the concerns if yeah. any yeah yeah okay yeah you guys aren't done it right there is nothing written much nothing much nothing much okay fine so let's go to the next one shall we okay next one is uh how we have changed yeah that's fine so now this situation 4 is the curious case 230 yeah we have time yep thanks thanks for doing that uh the curious case of a code review nazi do you have somebody like that in your office code review nazi <laughs> nazi is a person who is so authoritative and ruthless when it comes to code review <laughs> right and in this case of current situation you are that guy <laughs> okay so you write an email okay assume that you did okay uh saying this code review let's make it mandatory okay from myself that you 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 wrote that email to all scrum masters at my company dot com sent just now hi guys i see that a lot of code is pushed to release without being reviewed can we set up a code review system to make code reviews mandatory no matter what i would like i would like to request your inputs on this thank you write it when it comes to you right this is not the boss this is you you wrote this email you were so infuriated that code gets pushed to production without review right and uh, then what happens is one of your colleagues pings you on im he is the other scrum master who received this email okay he says hey just now saw your email regarding mandatory code review nice idea man <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> and then you respond yeah we need to be strict on mandating code reviews and then he responds true but one question should architects be blocked by code review aren't they here because the company trusts their decision developer it is okay but architect does their code also should get reviewed and then you say give me a minute to think man okay and these are your options option 1 no architects don't get to bypass code review option 2 i don't think we guys can take that call management has to answer that question <laughs> option 3 we can actually give exception to architects since they are trustworthy and that is how they became architects <laughs> go ahead hurry up we have just 5 minutes and i will conclude with the last situation so let's hurry up on this one here to the next yeah okay was this session useful is a question write your response oops and a and you can leave if you wish to and uh, what we can do is all these sheets can be put on display in different walls so that everybody can go and take a look at it about what other people actually wrote for each question 
Okay, and I am going to share the same presentation PPT in the conference in or it will come to your Agile India 2015 website yes. so that you can refer to what people told. It's, it's advisable to take some pictures so that you can go back and refer to what people actually think, what, what kind of planet people come from. That is what this exercise is all about. So one of you can place, take it and uh, place the sheets on the wall. And I think we are done. We don't have any more time. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's it, that's it. The fifth situation is this classroom. Okay, is this session useful or not? Respond and then put your thoughts on that sheet which is lying there at the exit. I am done and thank you very much. <laughs>